Welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, uh, steel genius, Laren well, just genius in general, Laren Thomas announces a new super steel uh, just for forgers. Uh, we take a look at a new Jack Wolf knife, and then camp knives. We're going to be talking recreation, bushcraft, and survival, all under six inches. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from Shane Gables, uh, a name you might be familiar with. Shane, good buddy uh, and uh, friend of the show, says, this is by far the best interview I've ever watched. This should be required viewing for all knife junkies. This man actually made tools to make terrorists ground temperature. How could anything be more badass than that? <clears throat> Shane Gables, I could not agree with you more. Uh, the Daniel Winkler interview was was a uh, real, uh, it was a milestone for me. I've been wanting to talk to uh, Daniel Winkler for quite some time. Finally, uh, Chris Stroop of Stroop Knives introduced me to him at Blade Show. Thank you, Chris, because that, uh, you know, He's a very busy man, and, and I'm sure a lot of people want to talk to him. So I felt privileged uh, to talk to him. Not only that, but I've been, you know, reading the Jack Carr books and watching Terminal List and all that. And so to see uh, Daniel Winkler's knives out there in the in the wild world and in entertainment and knowing that uh, they are favored by Navy SEALs, it's a thrill to me. You know, what can I say? And then knowing that it all came out of this patriotic past of reenacting Revolutionary War era soldiers. Uh, I love that. So thank you, Shane. And thank you one and all for watching, supporting the show, commenting. Uh, I've been more active in the comments recently. I, I uh, you know, I, I just, I get so much out of it. And uh, so I've been making more time recently to, 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 well, to answer back. So thanks for watching and thanks for commenting. Uh, before we get moving, I just want to say that uh, today is Mrs. Knife Junkie's birthday. And I want to wish her a very, very happy birthday. Right now, uh, as we record this, she is out on her second 20-mile run in preparation for the uh, Marine Corps Marathon coming up at the end of the month. And uh, she's she's amazing, and she's an inspiration to me. She, uh, Mrs. Knife Junkie is, is the perfect example of determination and a plan plus really hard work equals success. She put herself through. Uh, college. She put herself through graduate school, uh, bartending, and uh, and doing other jobs, and then uh, and then she has supported our family. Well, you know, she has uh, earned some incredible uh, ducats and uh, has risen to the top of a male-dominated industry. So uh, my hat is off to her. Not only that, but as a mother, she's like the perfect exemplar of a woman for for our daughters. So uh, happy birthday, baby! Keep on running. And uh, yeah, she's going to crush this marathon. And by the way, she hates running. That's discipline. So uh, hats off to you, baby. All right. So I think it's time now for a pocket check. Okay. So today uh, was, I had some of my favorites in pocket. I guess I could say that every day, but today we're going back to some of the classics. Uh, first up was the CQC, super CQC 15 by Emerson in my front right pocket. Uh, we were out and about with the family. I wanted something that I could deploy easily, you know, sometimes, uh, Sometimes uh, after reading the news and then going out into the world, <laughs> I'm more uh, likely to grab an Emerson or something waved. But, you know, Emerson's uh, Emerson's are really, uh, you know, not only fetching and cool to me anyway. Uh, I've just been reading a lot about them and how they have had real uh, real world use. Maybe, you know, I hear people say, I don't know any Navy SEALs that carry Emerson's. OK, fine. But a lot of people do, and a lot of people have gotten in sticky situations with them, and a lot of people train with them, uh, and uh, like in the uh, live media or the uh, organic medium testing uh, realm, and they do very, very well. Uh, luckily, I only use this <laughs> to shear a very stringy piece of pizza dough. 
this thing is so sharp and so thin with that chisel edge, it actually did better than my very well honed kitchen knife. So I was, uh, you know, had this big ball of dough, just a little bit too big for the pizza stone. And this is what it cut right through it. Like it was nothing. So <laughs> maybe not its intended purpose, but Hey, you know, does it matter? Um, and this giant grip gave me uh, a lot of surety over the cutting board. So uh, CQC 15 cut pizza dough, but was ready to cut much more today in my front right pocket. Uh, second up, the Jack Wolf knives laid back. Jack, just a beautiful sway back slip joint with the Warren Cliff blade. But you know this, this is a Jack Wolf knife, which means it's made with all of the modern, with the most modern techniques finished by hand and uh, created from modern uh, materials. That's titanium, micar uh, black canvas micarta, an M390 blade steel, full height hollow grind, and uh, just a, a wonderful Warren Cliff design. I love this blade shape, and I've always loved the sway back, and I love what uh, Ben Belkin did with it. Kind of unswayed the back a little bit and straightened it out just a touch, uh, which is preferred to me. And then last up, uh, in the running for most comfortable uh, EDC fixed blade in my collection, and my uh, this is one of my two absolute go-tos. Like, if I do not feel like uh, carrying a fixed blade, or it, it's just annoying me, if I put this on or the Hogtooth Tonto, I'm good to go. This one is the Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo. This thing is one of my favorite knives in my collection, period. Uh, Eric Kramer, who was on the show, uh, is a really uh, great guy. And um, when I spoke with him, was just getting back into making uh, folders. I know he doesn't, he prefers fixed blades. And uh, he is also former military and makes knives for his military buddies. That's, this is the, as I mentioned, the voodoo. It's a small upswept, he calls it Persian, I call it clip point. Um, but this, uh, just under four inches in blade uh, length, this is what he ended up settling on. When he first started making knives, he was making these big Rambo, um, you know, go to war looking knives for his soldier buddies and military buddies. And they're like, this knife, Eric, is sweet. I love it. You know, it goes great on the bed stand. He's like, what do you mean on the bed stand? Yeah, I use it for home protection. He's like, I made it for you to carry. He's like, well, it's too big. You know, I, I got so much other gear and it's all heavy and it's all bulky. And the last thing I need is a is a big knife weighing me down because I'm not using it that much. So he took that uh, and and brought those uh, those design requirements into his knives, and and now they're all real thin and pretty, uh, you know, reasonably sized. This is, I mean, I had him double edge this, but even without a double edge, this is just an amazing little fighting knife uh, with a 154 cm hollow ground blade. Um, also, it could flex into um, EDC, uh, but you know. A knife this this purpose driven, you're not going to probably want to use too much for EDC. So, these three are the ones I had on me today. Uh, that's the Emerson Super CQC 15, the um, uh, Hog Tooth. I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, Jack Wolf knives, laid back Jack, and the Eric Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo. And by the way, the sheath he made for this, his sheaths are incredible. And I have noticed uh, as I have been collecting custom fixed blade knives, is that you're you're sheath game has to be on um almost everyone i've gotten a knife from has made excellent sheaths and and i think people realize that that is absolutely one half of the recipe maybe even more because if the carry system isn't good if the carry system isn't working you're not going to be carrying that knife therefore the knife is in that situation useless so Great sheaths. Keep your eye out for great sheaths. I think that should be a requirement. All right. That's what I had on me today. Have on you. To, what did you have on you today? Uh, do let me know. Drop it in the comments. Uh, give me some ideas about how I should uh, responsibly spend my money on knives. Okay. I want to thank uh, some patrons. We've had some new patrons in the past couple, uh, well, past two weeks that have gotten mentioned. Some have gotten mentioned on Thursday Night Knives. I want to mention them all right here because uh, I want to make sure everyone gets their due. Um, <clears throat> so these are gentlemen junkies, and I am, uh, I am told they're gentlemen and scholars, one and all across the board. I want to thank Zachary Roberts, Will B, frequent contributor to Thursday Night Knives, uh, Yuval Peleg, Cam, Michael, 
and Jay McConnell, also a Thursday Night Knives uh, a denizen. I want to thank you guys so much for supporting the show. Uh, it's it's really appreciated. I also love the comments and I love the interaction, say, on Thursday Night Knives and elsewhere. Um, oftentimes people go by different screen names. So I don't know if I've spoken with you all many times as something else on screen um, but or, or Cam. But like, uh, you know. Likewise, thank you so much. It's greatly appreciated. And now you are in the running for this off-grid knife. So this is going to be the uh, giveaway knife for October on the 20th. Sorry, I keep banging my mic. So excited here. Uh, on October 20th, Thursday Night Knives will be giving this away. Off-grid knives, by the way. I love their packaging. You get the magnetic thing there. Um, and then they always have really nice artwork of their knives and of the theme, uh, like you know, the, the rhino has a rhino on it. Uh, very cool kind of tattoo looking artwork. Anyway, uh, here's the knife. I like the way it's uh, nestled in that foam thing. Uh, insert there. So this is the Rapid Strike Warncliffe Blackout. Uh, it also comes in orange with a serrated blade and a uh, glass breaker on the pommel. Uh, I have that one in my car, and that is uh, a rescue kind of thing. Uh, those serrations on that knife are not for everyone, that's for sure. Uh, but this, I could see in any pocket. This is 14C28N. That is a 100% straight edge, beautifully done straight edge. This is made by Microtech. You've got the, uh, you've got that dropping point there. Makes me wonder, is this a Warncliffe or is this a sheep's foot? And then it makes me wonder, does it matter? No, it doesn't. It is, it is what it is, and it's pretty damn cool very utilitarian and by the way great for that rescue knife and you could use this as such too just because you have this uh curve here makes it easier to get under something like a seat belt though you know that point is still actually pretty acute so i don't want to be talking out of school i'm no rescue guy uh but it seems like that blade shape might be more uh more conducive to to rescue anyway this thing is on the uh rapid fire i don't know if they call it that but it's the rapid fire platform and this is an assisted knife and before i hear people go oh this thing this is an amazing assisted knife it feels incredibly strong it comes out like a uh, like a pro tech it, it, it really slams out of the handle it does feel like an automatic knife uh, very different from that lag you get from from the speed safe uh, from Kershaw or the lag you get from the CRKT or the SOG. It's just, it just flies out. Uh, I was talking to Kerry uh, about why he does the assisted open uh, on this knife. And he says for a couple of reasons, one being uh, this one is, uh, it was an early one and favored by a lot of people, but it has, it's always had uh, um, sort of survival and uh, rescue in mind. So uh, to him that, that easy quick deployment uh and sure deployment is uh you know fits fits the form uh but the other the other thing is they sell <laughs> uh if you look at the let's see on thursday night knives last week i was talking about oh are they dead is assisted open dead and then uh someone came on i think it may have been shane actually came on and said uh yo that's why do you think 50 percent of what crkt and kershaw makes are are assisted because they sell people love them so in any case this is the best assisted i've ever come across to include the cold steel swift great deep carry pocket clip with the with the recessed screws very nice spoon clip on mine i'm going to push it down a little bit this does create a kind of a little bit of a hot spot because it does swoop up pretty dramatically contoured and milled handle scales this thing's awesome. So this is the October Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway Knife, the off-grid rapid-fire Warncliffe Blackout. Uh, so Zachary Roberts will be Yuval Peleg, uh, Cam Michael, and Jay McConnell. You now stand to win this knife. Just watch for the Wheel of Destiny to be spinning on Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on October 20th. All right, coming up, we're going to take a look at two new knives from Civivi, and uh, we'll look at Laren Thompson's new forging steel and so much more right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. 
through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So Vivi just announced two new folders, and uh, one of them, one of them has a familiar look, and uh, it's very fetching to me. It's the one on top uh, here uh, in this article by Ben Schwartz over at Knife News, and it's the new Clavi. Rolls off the tongue, Clavi. Oh, stop hell! Uh, one of my one of my favorite designers, you know, consistently puts out things that look like oh, stop hell knives, uh, but are utilitarian, beautiful, futuristic, all at the same time. Um, I've been showing off the Best Tech Man Dundee, uh, which is coming out uh, next week, and uh, loving that thing. And it's got a similar handle to this. This is the this uh, purple knife is called the Clavi. It's by Ostop Hell and Savivi. That's a three, just north of three inch blade. But look at that taper on that Warncliffe blade. Just beautiful. That's Nitro V, front flipping, uh, liner locking, G10 micarta having, um, and recessed. Uh, deep carry pocket clip, you know, so pretty much the same Civivi recipe. So, you know, it's going to be good. And um, the same Civivi recipe, but just a different look, that being O oh, Stop Hell. I don't think he's done anything with Civivi or we. I think this might be his first uh, collaboration. Beautiful knife. We all look forward to checking out. And then they have a new clip point coming out. And this is hot. This looks really nice. It's called the Cachet. 3.4 inch <clears throat> clip point blade with a fuller from the minds of the folks at Civivi itself. Uh, really nice looking knife here. A liner lock flipper uh, comes in a number of flavors. Uh, that sort of patterned G10 or micarta uh, looks a bit like the um, GL Hansen and Sons micarta, at least from this distance. And you've got uh, carbon fiber. You've got some Damasteel options, but I'm loving the shape of that blade. Uh, what steel do we have on here? I'm not sure. Uh, okay, don't know yet, but uh, like the look of it, and uh, I love the ivory G10. And by the way, I said that it looked like GL Hansen Sons. That's actually black and red lava-like G10. So that's G10. So two interesting knives coming out from uh, from Civivi, no doubt, with endless variations on the way, especially if they are successful. And, you know, who doesn't love Civivi? It seems like uh, they put very few designs to pasture. Uh, so I think um, I think right now they're just cranking out as many of them as they can because there's an appetite for them. OK, next up, Laren Thomas. Uh, you know him. Knife Steel Nerds, Laren Thomas. We've had him on the show a couple of times. Uh, very, very smart guy. Obviously, I, I guess that's just stating the obvious knife steel nerds if you go to the website you'll see what i mean i mean he's got long long articles uh on different blade steels this is a man who went to school for steel uh, you know did his graduate work in in steel um uh conjuring and he does it for the uh auto industry professionally and his hobby is making us all these amazing super steels like magna cut uh, that was put out by Crucible. Well, Apex Ultra is his new um, steel. I just love the name X Apex Ultra. I just want to say that all day long. But he developed it in partnership with knife makers uh, Marco Goldman and Tobias Hangler. And this is steel that is optimized for forging, for the going in and out of the forge and being pounded. And it has uh, a lot of... Um, uh, qualities that, that are comparable to 01 and 1095, but they have uh, made it tougher. Or, or, uh, um, Laren has made it tougher and given it a much higher uh, edge retention uh, property. So uh, this is about where I'm going to stop in talking about the chemistry of blade steel, because um, when I've spoken with him both in person and on the show, he's been able to pull me along. You know how sometimes uh, well, this happens with me sometimes. Sometimes I'm watching a movie or like Game of Thrones when we were watching it. And while I was watching it, I was understanding perfectly what was happening. And then when asked to repeat what happened, it's like, 
you know, it was cool. And that's kind of what my conversations with Laren have been like, because he'll he'll talk and he'll get me to understand the chemistry of steel while we're talking. And then when we're done, it evaporates. But I, I do remember the main parts like higher toughness, higher edge retention, and um, also a greater ability to add other materials in like copper and other kind of things. Um, I'm not sure how that works, but you can read Laren Thomas's interview on, um, on, uh, I'm sorry, on Knife News. He talks with Ben Schwartz and uh, he, he, you'll get the idea there. Laren Thomas, great guy and great designer of steel. Man, are we not living in a great time? By the way, look, if you're looking at the screen, there is a beautiful Japanese chef's knife with a beautiful wooden sheath uh, that has a little knob that sticks out of it that suggests you're to wear this in your apron belt, which I think is so cool. All right, so we'll move on from here. I, I think I've said cool about 100 times in the last minute. Uh, check out Laren Thomas's interview on, on uh, Knife News, where he talks about his new forging steel, Apex Ultra. All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at the one new knife I got this past week, and then Camp Knives. These are knives for recreation, bushcraft, and survival, all fixed and under six. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Well, here it is, ladies and gentlemen. It's October's Jack Wolf Knife. October 2022 Jack Wolf Knife review uh, release is the beautiful Vampire Jack. The Vampire Jack. I'm going to try moving this background, see if I can get a better focus on this beautiful Vampire Jack without it. So this is the new release. You've got a spear point blade, a long, slender sort of spear point. It does come to a belly uh, just north, or just, uh, I guess in this case, west of the uh, of the pole. But it is, on the whole, a more slender knife. And if you look at it kind of halfway down, you'll see that it is a spear point, equal on top and bottom. Similar to the dogleg jack, which was also a spear point, but came out to a very wide belly, uh, after the nail neck. This is a more slender piercing kind of blade. This has the this has the full height hollow grind that we come to expect from a Jack Wolf knife, except for the Benny's clip, which uh, a full height hollow grind would just be out of character for that blade. But the full height hollow grind just makes it so sharp. Uh, it's just such a wicked edge. It's such a wickedly sharp edge. And then it also, with that, with that tall triangular sharpening notch, gives you a lot of sharpening life. So as, the, as you use this knife through the years, I mean, let's be honest here. It is M390 blade steel, so it's going to hold on for a long time. Um, you know, maybe unlike the pocket knife you got from your granddad, that's a 1095 blade steel. This blade steel will last longer, so I bet that it will retain its shape longer even through uh, a lot of use. Uh, because it will it will require less sharpening over the years, uh, but nonetheless, uh, each Jack Wolf knife gives you that generous sharpening notch and a very very thin behind the edge uh, blade, so that you can make it all the way up uh, as you sharpen. Just a beautiful knife, and then Walk and Talk is amazing as per Jack Wolf knives. This one to me feels like an eight on my totally arbitrary scale of pull weights on a knife, um, on a slip joint. Probably, I mean, every time I get a new Jack Wolf knife, I say something like, oh, this has the stoutest pull so far, but they pretty much all have very stout dialed in pulls. This one seems stouter to me because you have a little bit less to pull to, to hold on to to open it up if you don't use the nail neck. Uh, that being said, you don't need much because it comes to that full height hollow grind creating sort of a ridge up top that you can pull, hold on to. Um, I always prefer to 
uh, pull open a, a slip joint knife without the nail nick if I can. I don't uh, I don't take great care of my nails, but I don't need them all like uh, chipping and all that. So, yeah, I, I love how you can grasp most of these uh, knives just by pulling, just by grabbing the blade and pulling it. Yeah. So this one does have a lighter pull than this one. So it's not totally arbitrary. Uh, but yeah, I would put this at an eight. Beautiful carbon fiber on my example. It's a sort of a marbled carbon fiber with very subtle hints of purple in there. You can see some right there. And you can see a little bit sometimes in certain lights. A very subtle and nice. Reminds me a little bit of uh, perhaps the cloak of a vampire. The velvety cloak of a vampire catching the light in just such a way uh, that it comes out purple. Uh, right before it descends on its victim. Uh, great choice for October, uh, you know, the Vampire Jack. Uh, the You can look at my unboxing, and I'm about to do a, uh, I'll be doing a close-up video of this this week, and you can see all the artwork the, that goes with it. Um, it's all awesome. All right, so let's talk camp knives. Now, Bob, what's a camp knife, you say, or how do you define a camp knife? You're not a camper. Well, I've been camping. It's just been years. and uh, But I have an idealized vision of how I would go camping today. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe this vision actually comes to life uh, sometime before my daughters grow up and fly the coop. Maybe, maybe we'll all go camping. I, I have a very indoorsy crowd here. Uh, I mean, my daughters like to go on hikes with me, but uh, that's, that's about <laughs> where it ends. So let's say we take them camping what am I going to have on my belt? That's kind of like the big important thing. Uh, that's, that's where the whole camping trip starts. It starts around the knives and then, and then you go outward from there. Uh, I'm told. Uh, so I would, ha I would have, I break this down into three sort of, um, categories, recreation, bushcraft, and survival. What's recreation you ask? Well, I'm thinking camping, tent camping. Uh, you know, you have a belt knife on the whole time while you're tent camping and, uh, and then when you sleep, it's next to you. Um, but that knife is there to do everything. It is there to, uh, you know, feather stick. It's there to, to, to food prep. It's there to uh, cut rope to make your shelter or, or at least to help put up your tent. And, uh, you know, it, it's also there for hunting. Recreation. Hunting is a sport. It's a thing that people like to do. I also know it goes much deeper. It's a way to get food. It's a spiritual thing and all that. But I'm putting it in the rep recreation camp because it's not quite survival and it's not quite bushcraft. Uh, so, so let's start with recreation. Now, these are the knives that uh, I would have on me as uh, as American Dad at, at the campsite. And and a lot of this you have to see in the nostalgic colors of those old um, national parks posters. Okay, Th this is what's going on in my head. All right, I'm going to start with a classic. This classic is, uh, well, it's one that many of us have and that we all recognize, and that can be had far and wide, and that is the Buck 119. And I say it can be had far and wide. Uh, this, I'm, this was a gift, and I'm pretty sure it was purchased at Walmart. And the fact that you can go to Walmart and get this great classic is, well, it's pretty cool. All right, this comes in a beautiful leather sheath. It's got a plastic insert and a collar to retain the handle. Uh, to retain the blade, but here it is. This is the classic scream knife, right? This is the knife they use in that movie Scream, I believe. Either that or the 120. It may have been a little bit longer, but in in any case, it has a menacing look. It does with that with that curved clip point, the long straight blade, and then the the hollow grind. I'm sorry, but a hollow grind just looks more menacing because the uh, the light dances on it. So I could see why the prop master of that movie would choose this knife. Um, also, it's not too exotic. It's readily available. And there's something uh, kind of frightening about that, about using an implement so readily available, like the kitchen knife. Uh, anyway, so this has a really fat Delrin handle. Uh, I always thought it was a little bit oddly fat, the way it kind of comes out to the guard. Uh, I always thought it should kind of be a little more slender, but... Um, maybe my hands have grown <laughs> or, or I just find it more comfortable now than I did when I first got it. I thought, wow, that's bulky. That's unexpected. But um, it just feels really good in hand. And I think that that bulk is good, especially 
considering this is a slick plastic handle and this is a knife that is intended for hunting as well as like all the other things I was mentioning. And so if you're using this knife in a bloody situation, it seems like, uh, and by bloody situation, I mean like, uh, you know, dressing game. Uh, it seems like having a thicker knife, a thicker handle is probably a good idea uh, if, it's, if it gets slick and all that. If you're not going to have all sorts of texturing on it, thicker is better, I guess. Uh, you can see it's got a rat tail tang. Well, you can't see that, but it has a tang that comes down. And then you can see a little pin, which has been polished over. But the pin goes there, holding on that aluminum butt cap. Just a classic all-around camp knife, uh, but with a great look. That that clip point Bowie look is, uh, well, it's useful. Uh, you got that nice big belly. You got that nice, long, straight to do your uh, carving work and that kind of thing. So um, just an awesome knife. This is 420 HC, and uh, but Buck really knows what they're doing with their 400 series steels. So before you bulk, know that it, this is good steel. All right, second up, this is sort of the modern luxury version of the knife I just pulled out. And, and by luxury, I mean it's an expensive knife, and it's not one that I need, but it's one that I got because of how it I'm going to be honest because of how it makes me feel. I saw this knife and, and I thought, wow, I, I got to get this. This is the Boone 2 from Bark River Knives. And why did I think that? Because this knife is a sporting knife from the early, you know, early 20th century style sporting knife, hunting knife, camping knife, and that kind of thing. But it's also the kind of knife that was turned into a combat knife during World War II. This is sort of the proto um, K-Bar. This, this type of knife. So you've got a stacked leather handle. This knife, by the way, comes in a variety of handle flavors from Bark River Knives. But uh, true to the spirit of this style knife, it's got a an aged stacked leather handle. Aged meaning it's just darker leather. And uh, it, aluminum pommel and guard and a 3V blade. So now we're departing from the tradition here with the Super Steel, the 3V outdoor, you know, Super Steel. And um, but maintaining the look and the function of this style, early 20th century sporting knife uh, that was turned turned towards combat during World War II. Um, this one, I remember when I got it, I just did a lot of poetic waxing about it and and my vision for it. But it hasn't changed. I, I have this nostalgic vision of the past, as many of us do, uh, uh, you know, this sort of simpler time when people were a little bit closer to nature, but still had all of the benefits of civilization. Uh, what do they say? Nostalgia is history plus a couple of drinks. Um, yeah, that's what this knife does for me. Uh, so, yeah, this would be in the camping thing, uh, in the recreation sector. And if I ever do go camping and take uh, take my ladies out into the great wild, uh, this will be on my hip. Uh, the Great Wild KOA. <laughs> All right, next up is a gift from my brother-in-law. This is a knife. Uh, there are two gifts from my brother-in-law here and two knives that I would say I would never get on my own. I, to say I would never get it makes it sound like they're bad knives. That's not what I mean. It's just uh, this is what I get from my brother-in-law and my brother. Knives that I wasn't considering and they see, and they're like, oh, I bet he would like this. And they're always right. This is the Temperance 2 from Spyderco, a really classy package. Um, and so we're, we're still in the recreation um, uh, sector here for these kind of uh, camp knives. And could you not see this on the belt of some cool suburban hipster dad, uh, you know, around the campsite? O or... A, a hunter. It's got the it's got the pouch style, beautiful, beautiful pouch style, full grain leather sheath, um, and then it's got a great VG10 blade. That's a full height flat grind, full flat grind, much like a large Endura blade, uh, a little bit thicker than an Endura blade naturally. You got the full tang, and this sumptuous, so comfortable. It's almost more comfortable in your hand than having nothing in your hand handle. <laughs> and that is a canvas micarta. It's begun to take on my filth signature. I've had this knife a long time. I don't use it very much um, or use it very little, carry it every once in a while. Uh, but it's a great all-arounder. 
Um, this knife, uh, if you needed to use this in a, a fighting situation, it really is well set up for it with the bird's beak and the the uh, the bookended handle and the micarta and the thumb ramp and the and the reach. Uh, but that's not what this is for. This is a recreational knife. This is a camping knife. This would be great for food prep out at the campsite. Also good for woodworking tasks uh, to include feather sticking and carving uh, because it does have a nice uh, thin behind the edge uh, profile. Um, uh, I guess heavy carving, you, you want something a little stouter like a Scandi blade, but um, great thing to have on your hip around the campsite. And I don't know, uh, any of you hunters out there, would this be any good for hunting? I'm not sure. Maybe not enough belly, maybe too much blade. I don't know. Uh, but I could see it around the campsite right next to those cool jeans. K-U-H-L, that is. All right, next up, Tops, Tex Creek. This is this is the last one in the recreation lineup here. Now, this one, uh, very handsomely set up with that lanyard and that sheath. This, this is one that I originally bought to make a kydex sheath for 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 edc i made a great kydex sheath for it i always talk about how when i make sheaths they're either really good or really bad well i made a really good one for this one but i never use it uh, on the belt the it's it's got about a one-to-one -one handle the blade ratio here and on the belt it seems top heavy so i don't use the kydex for that because it doesn't dangle below and uh, in the waistband it's just too long you'd need to reduce the handle length by an inch for me or three quarters of an inch to make it good for in the waistband. So this just got relegated to backyard use. And uh, consequently, I carried this for many summers in a row as my outdoor knife. Um, and, uh, you know, I use I use others. And when I'm talking about out outdoor knife, this, this is the scenario. Uh, I've let the backyard go for two weeks or three weeks. The vines have crept in. The grass is tall and I'm out out and back taming it. Um, that's about it. So <laughs> this has excelled at all of the things I've used it for out back, cutting saplings, cutting vines, um, uh, doing some kindling, some light. Uh, you can see a little bit of uh, light batoning has been done with this um, just for fun, not out of survival or anything, just recreation. So I do know that this one works well for that. The sheath has a big part to do with it because you're You've got the pouch sheath. You're walking around. Your your knife is in and out of your pocket as you're or in and out of the sheath as you're doing different tasks. It's nice to not have to fumble around with a with a uh, retaining strap and all that. So um, great sheath by Tops as usual. Their leather sheaths are awesome. But this thing would just make a great uh, camp campside knife. Uh, again, hunting knife. I, I'd love any hunters who are watching this to chime in. Uh, as to which ones here would make good skinning knives, because I'm just, I know what good skinning knives look like, but I've also seen people uh, take knives that didn't seem like good skinning knives and use them as such. So uh, maybe I'm overcomplicating things. I don't know. Okay, now we're going to move into bushcraft. And bushcraft is more aimed at uh, wood processing, carving, um, uh, feather sticking, uh, making traps making uh, utensils, making tools temporary or not for the campsite out of wood. <clears throat> um, first up is from Off Grid Knives, and this is the Ridgeback. This has a really great setup, though it's a camp knife. It's kind of set up like a tactical knife. You've got the nice Kydex sheath. Um, you've got the dangler that attaches to the back, which you can remove and replace with a a tech lock or any other sort of locking system or um, carry system you like mounting system that you like uh the sheath is great it even flies if you can get it it flies off uh, the handle this is a 14c 28n scandy ground sort of kephart um profiled blade uh if you look down the center almost spear point um though you have some uh, a change of shape here as compared to the belly um, that Scandi grind, the bevel is the edge, and that is uh, makes for a very sharp, very acute edge, but also strong. So you can really horse into some 
wood and not have it break on you. Here, let's see if I can get a a nice shot of that edge. Here, you can kind of see if you if you're watching, you can kind of see. I'm I'm holding the knife so that the edge is coming straight at the camera, and you can see how it's top and bottom. The top is dark, the bottom is light. And uh, ne'er the twain shall meet. It's not like a, uh, 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 there are a lot of Scandi ground blades. Tops makes a lot of Scandi ground blades that have secondary edges, secondary bevels. A lot of people do that. A lot of knife, knife makers do that just to make the final cutting surface less delicate. But I don't know. I took this one out. I cut down a bunch of saplings. Well, not a bunch. I cut a couple of saplings down with it in our park uh, don't tell anyone and uh did some carving with it i did a video when i got this of that and it did really well i mean it just chopped right through the sapling like it's nothing this is sort of axe like edge geometry but but extremely sharp and then for the carving you can get really precise and thin with what you're taking off because this bevel you can just sort of as you would with a sharpening stone you can rest the bevel so that it's flat across the surface you're cutting and then just angle it in ever so slightly and push and you'll get very very thin um, and very close to the to the wood there and get very thin shavings and such uh, the handle is a really nice micarta on this version this is a special edition of the off-grid ridge back uh, sent to me by carrie thank you carrie uh, this has the jimping all the way up the spine. I mean, like, you got to have giant thumbs to to reach the end of that. And there's a slight blue tint to this black micarta, so it it, it adds class. Uh, I like this part right here. Um, you'll see that on a lot of outdoor knives where your thumb can rest in that channel if you're doing, say, those weird chest pull cuts. Here, I'll do that over here, where you, where you sort of, you hold the stick there and you go... And the edge, is, the edge is held away from you. Well, that little divot in the handle allows your thumb a comfortable place to rest as you do that weird thing. Uh, the chest pull cut. A big Gideon's tactical technique. Okay, next up is, the, is also a uh, Scandi ground blade. I do have a Mora knife I did not include in this because it's just a little petite uh, by comparison. I need to get an, a Garber or one of the one of the flagship um, Moras. This next one, straight from Ukraine, the BPS Knives HK5. This also was sent to me by the makers. Uh, they reached out to me. Do you want to check this out? I said, yeah, send it along. And uh, it's really nice. It's, it's interesting because you've got a full grain. I mean, this is a thick leather sheath. It is absolutely beautiful if i could eat this sheath i would a uh, very great sheath with an excellent dangler uh, i did carry this i've carried this on my belt just farting around the house and it the dangler works great i'm ordinarily not uh, a dangler type it's kind of floppy and kind of gets in the way but in this case it works great so really nice sheath with the white stitching i have this paracord on here because when i first got it it was so tight in the sheath it was very hard to pull the knife out uh, i'll probably put a nicer one on here this was just temporary but there's the knife that's 1066 1066 or 1055 can you read this for me sonny it's got very small writing um here i'm gonna put it up here and then maybe you can see you're like, yeah, you ran into this last time. You still haven't figured it out? Yeah, it's 1066. Okay, so the blade is very nicely sharpened. Someone uh, someone left a, a comment in my video on this, someone who probably doesn't know what they're talking about, and said, that edge is crap. And I was like, my thought is, well, it's not on mine. You might have one, doubt it. You might have one, and it might be dull, doubt it. Uh, but mine is very sharp, so, you know, thanks for your valuable contribution. Uh, the edge on this is not crap. It's really good. Um, there, there are some definite handmade qualities to this. I mean, these are handmade by a father and son team over in Ukraine. Uh, the very nicely shaped and contoured handle is unfinished. So, you know, I'm going to finish it myself. I'm going to sand it just a little bit because I've used this a bit. Sand it. 
so that they're clean. I'll take them off, take the handle skills off, and I have some stain. I'll, I'll stain it uh, like a deep red color that I like. Put it back on, and it is good to go. I kind of like that feature. Uh, these are very inexpensive knives, 30 bucks, and uh, you can get them on Amazon or bpsknives.com, I believe. Um, but uh, what was I saying? But, but, well, uh, oh, these are very inexpensive knives. And so I kind of like the idea of being sent this wicked, awesome blade and then an unfinished handle that I can, that I can make whatever color I want. You don't have to, you could just let it go. It's stable and feels good. You know, it's, it's, uh, sanded and smooth, uh, but it, it allows for customization, the kind of low level customization someone like I am capable of has the 90 degree spine for throwing sparks. And really the 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 USP of this is the amazing sharp blade. Unlike the dude who made his comment, this one is wickedly, wickedly sharp. So BPS knives, a great uh, uh, a, an up and comer or or new to to our market a bushcraft knife. And it's no bells and no whistles, and I really like it. I, I would say the bell and whistle here is the incredible luxury sheath. Awesome sheath. All right. I keep getting tangled up here. Last up, a, a last up in the bushcraft area. Now, this is one, another one from my brother-in-law that, like I said, I just wouldn't get myself. It just uh, now, actually, I looked at it because it looks cool, and I like the name, Serata. It reminds me of Serata Escrima. But this is a, a knife from a custom knife maker, um, Ackerman. Oh, what's his first name? I, sorry, I'm spacing his first name. But this is the Serata. Great sheath on this Serata. Even though it's got the giant, <laughs> uh, uh, what do you call it? The, the giant uh, profile uh, as Spyderco likes to do. They make these giant pancake uh, sheaths, but it works great. Uh, so this is the Ackerman Serata, and this is a drop forged knife, and it's got a really nice thick blade. It's five sixteenths of an inch back here, and it distal tapers towards the tip. And that is 440 steel, a 440C cast. What did I say? Drop forged? This is cast. 440 steel and you can see it says it right there there I i'm sure you trusted me and i didn't need to waste those five seconds trying to get that to to focus but it's cast i love the shape of this knife and i very rarely uh carry this i've used this out in in the woods when i've gone on hikes with my girls just to have and see how it works and it works great <laughs> but what what i think it does best and the reason i have this in the woodcraft is that it's got that wedge like full flat ground thick wedge like blade and it is good for carving and it is good for pounding through small sticks you know like if you had to if you had to like make yourself kindlings with this kindling uh um uh, sticks with this for your fire you'd be in great shape because of that wedge i mean it truly is a wedge shape uh, but also the way it, it's got such a, a broad relief cutting edge, it makes it a very sturdy but acute carver. This is a great knife for carving. Um, so I'm putting this in wood in the uh, bushcraft. All of that being said, to me it looks like a scalping knife. To me it looks like a oh, kind of an old school Indian American Indian or Native American knife for some reason or or an early colonial knife and uh looks like something you'd scalp a sucker with let's see right here there's ackerman's maker's mark and you see a tomahawk there i'm wondering if that's uh if i saw that tomahawk in uh, mr ackerman's maker's mark and then just sort of extrapolated from there that i thought it looked indian but it does and i like that aspect to it spider co does interesting things and and take on interesting designs that are you know so modern but so often refer to to past you know historical knives and i really like that and i think this is one i think this is like that kind of like some of the bowies they put out that look very modern um, but also tip their hat to the past so this is the ackerman designed serata and uh where the 
Scandi ground knives uh, to me are more for delicate, intricate, uh, fine tasks, whatever they call it. Uh, this Ackerman Serrata seems more of a brute. You need to power through a bunch of kindling or you need to, you know, I don't know. That's what this seems like because of that cast thick distal tapered 440 blade. Okay, next up, this one is from the Newfoundland Knife Company. And this is the Ranger Knife. Jonathan Stiles is the proprietor and designer of Newfoundland Knife. Uh, you should check them out. He not only um, makes a lot of cool custom knives and, uh, and has some of them uh, manufactured like he did with this, the Ranger. He had this made in uh, Utah or Idaho by um, Millet Knives. Uh, but he's also just an adventurer outdoorsman type dude in uh, Newfoundland, drives around on his motorcycle with his cool dogs, taking awesome pictures of cool places. Uh, it's one of those uh, one of those Instagram accounts that you that you tune into to 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 show yourself how boring your existence is. Uh, so he's out there design, you know, doing cool things, designing these cool knives. This one, the Ranger knife uh, comes in a number of flavors. This one is the red, as you can see. A uh, contoured wood handle is so comfortable. Again, you see that divot that you see on, on a lot of these outdoor knives. Now, this is the first knife in the three that I'm calling a survive in the survival camp realm. So I mentioned before that that all knives were under six inches. And I, I don't want to say that that was a lie. I want to say that was misintentionally false information. This is just a hair over this is a, a quarter of an inch or what was that? Yeah, just about a quarter inch over six. So, but it's still in that category because it's not a combat knife. Uh, to me, it is a survival knife. It's very thin. You're saying, Bob, that's too thin for a survival knife. How will you survive with that thin blade? This thing, this is D2, and it's got a half height saber grind. It is so sharp. That is the thing about this. It is a nearly two inch broad blade but it's very thin blade stock uh, for the for the type knife at one inch one eighth inch thick. And so you've got that at one inch at, at an eighth inch thick, two inches broad with a half height saber grind, you get an incredibly thin behind the edge geometry. And that's why this is a great survival knife. You're going to slip between the atoms of anything you're trying to cut. It is it is a really, really good cutter. It's also somewhat flexible and robust. I mean, D2, D2 uh, uh, steel, we can we often think of as quite rigid as it's a tool steel. But the way that this is heat treated, it's it's got a bit of a flex to it. This has a um, and and that also helps with the the thinness. Also helps with that. This has a mysterious little portion in it um, right here that sharpening notch which is actually a pretty great sharpening notch it'll give you a lot of room to move north but it's sharpened it's got a little sharp edge like for cutting cord now it doesn't do that so well but it's an interesting feature and i've thought about i've thought about that and designed stuff like that into knives that i've just drawn out but you see that right there that's like got that sort of scooped out blade like a gut hook kind of but I think it's there for just cutting cordage. One thing I, I wanted to see on this knife is a lanyard hole on the pommel end. There's a lanyard hole right here, and uh, that's good. And, you know, it's totally effective. Um, but I'd also like to see one here. I think the D, the D guard style of um, lanyard can be very um, helpful. And I think on this knife itself, it would be great. Uh, that sort of D guard would go over and then you can use your fingers to do stuff and you don't have to let go of the blade. Um, just a suggestion. I thought that'd be cool to have another another one there. This one I've used in the backyard again uh, uh, quite a bit. Um, it hasn't really altered the, it hasn't affected the Cerakote too much. I mean, I could see a little bit, but the Cerakote is hanging tough. Um, the red is really good for camping when you drop your knife. Um, Except in autumn, <laughs> if you're in the woods in autumn uh, and you drop your knife, it might blend in a little more. But uh, we get the idea with the colored colored blades. All right. So that is the Newfoundland Knives Ranger, also in a nice, 
thick, full grain, somewhat unfinished um, sheath that doubles as a pouch sheath because you can uh, wrap this around. And I do this oftentimes with retaining straps, just put them through the belt loop and snap them so they're out of the way. And then when you're using it, you can just pull it out and drop it, pull it out and drop it. Then when you're done using it, you just snap it up, get on your horse and ride off. Ride off the 25 feet to the house for supper. All right. Penultimate knife of this list. Uh, this is still in the survival, solidly in the survival camp with this one. Mr. Survival himself designed this, Doug Ritter. And when I say Mr. Survival, I should put a, I should put a caveat on that. That's Mr. Survival from a crashed aircraft. Uh, that's uh, Doug Ritter's... Um, Doug Ritter's approach to knives has always been from that perspective uh, as a helicopter pilot uh, and creating survival kits for helicopter pilots. That's kind of how he started. And then he wanted to make knives that had the, the latest of super steels, but could be on an affordable platform, much like the Griptilian. That's why he went to Benchmade initially to have his Ritter Griptilian made. And then uh, years later, moved to Hogue, when uh, Benchmade stopped doing OEM work altogether, even for Mr. Ritter, he went to Hogue, and Hogue, of course, ran with it and just perfected the whole thing. Well, they now make his RSK Mark III, and by say by saying they now make it, they've been making it for a couple of years now. But uh, um, this is the survival version of the Hogue RSK Mark I, which is the Ritter grip, the folding Ritter grip tillion. First of all, I'm going to show it in this sheath because. This is a rare bird. This is an excellent nylon sheath. I love this nylon sheath. First of all, you got this here, so you can you can put it on your belt without un, without taking your belt off, which is totally essential uh, for these kind of knives, I think. And a lot of them do that here. Um, most of the leather ones, none of the leather ones do, though. You also have a, an, another option here with the... Uh, with a secondary snap. I'm not sure what that would be for. Maybe for Molly compatibility. I'm not sure though. Uh, and then you've got the retention strap in the right place, right down in front of the guard. Love that. And then you have a stout plastic lining in here. And then of course it ships with all this paracord and a, one of these things. I'm not sure what that's called. Tightener. Uh, so a great sheath, but the real star of the show is the knife. This is S45 VN, the only S45 VN in my collection. And I uh, got to be honest, haven't really noticed what the difference is because I haven't pushed this knife or used it that much. Um, again, this has gotten backyard and uh, walk in the park treatment. So it's it's gotten sporadic use in carving, cutting, and this kind of percussive. I don't even want to call it chopping, but uh, sort of. Yeah, I guess that's what percussive cutting is. I guess light chopping. And this thing is awesome. I mean, you can if you can see this knife right now if you're if you're watching, it's got a very height very high height saber grind. That's a flat grind that's about an inch and a quarter tall on a relatively thin uh blade. So it's really sharp behind the edge, similar to the um Newfoundland Knife Company Ranger that I just had out. So three of these, uh, I'm sorry, two of these three survival knives that I will be showing you actually have very thin behind the edge blades. I am not convinced, and, and maybe that's because I'm not a survivalist, but I am not convinced that a survival knife needs to be a pry bar. Um, I think a really good cutting knife that is well put together and well heat treated is probably the best bet. Does that sound accurate to anyone out there who's a survivalist or who has more experience than I, which is, uh, you know, pretty easy to be had. What about you military guys who've been out there training in the woods, sharpen pry bar, or do you want something like this that has a very, you know, thin profile and cuts easily, uh, well heat treated on a robust and tough steel. Now this S 45 VN is probably not as tough as, um, some of the high carbon steels, but, for an all-arounder, this knife is ideal. Also, when you look at it in this uh, aspect, you see that it's contoured. It's contoured this way, contoured that way. So contoured on all axes. And then you have that radiating sunburst pattern coming from the first 
first screw, and that gives you just great, great gription. This is an awesome knife. Um, yeah, I very much like this knife. This is one that, though it's not as tactically flashy as some of the knives I like just because they uh, spark my imagination, this is one that I would actually really want to have on me uh, in, in a troubled situation. Actually, this, this might be the knife I rotate into my backpack, um, my daily carry backpack. The world ain't getting any nicer, and I might need a survival knife on the way home from work. Right now, I have the SOG seal pup in there, and actually, I'm sure that's just fine. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe I'll rotate this one in because uh, for that reason. <laughs> for what reason, you say? Because I'm paranoid. <laughs> All right, last up. This is the classic, uh, you know, uh, the classic way to end this one on the survival end of things this is the srk from cold steel this is a blade that has been around in their catalog i think for over 20 years at this point beautiful clip point blade and we'll get to that in a second but just a great sheath the securex sheaths by cold steel on the whole are excellent um, and many of them most of them have this style dangler uh, as you can see it just sort of attaches to the back sneaks up the back and then you've got this retaining strap um, but the, the retention on this is so good, you don't really need the strap. And then here is the blade. This is the SK. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the Carbon V version uh, from 2006. I bought this to put in a survival kit for my wife. She uh, Before she was my wife, she moved to London for a year and a half to open an office for the company she worked for at the time. And... Uh, I made her a survival pack and put this in there. It's probably 100% illegal in the Great Britain, but she got in and out with it. So, um, and uh, so this somehow kind of left her left her uh, go bag and ended up in my collection. That's terrible, you say, Bob. What if you have to evacuate? Well, we have everything centrally located, so if we have to evacuate, uh, I I know where to grab stuff, and I've already replaced this in there anyway. I'm basically, if we have to evacuate, I'm taking this giant craftsman tool chest on wheels and <laughs> pulling it behind me, you know, so I'm not under knived in the apocalypse. This has a nice stout um, three sixteenths of an inch thick uh, blade stock. And one of the features I love about this that that allows this to flex into a more uh, tactical role in my eye is the um, zero ground swedge, much like the uh, Trailmaster or the Laredo Bowie, the swedge comes to a zero uh, edge. So you can hit bone with that. You know, if you're a hunter and you're breaking a bone, that swedge will do great for, for that purpose, I would imagine. Um, or if you're in a situation where you want to disarm someone, um, hit, hit, not necessarily cut their hand off, hit them on the back of the hand with this, you break the bone and, uh, maybe even create a gash or a gouge. Uh, but also uh, at the tip, it comes to a diamond point. So this, and that's the, that's the more salient issue uh, with that zero ground swedge is that it, this is gonna be a great knife for puncturing things. So if you have this on you for survival and you're caught in the canopy of an airplane uh, or you need to pound this through something, you have a, you have a diamond shaped tip on a very stout blade. So I, I do like that zero ground swedge factor. And then the overall, wait, did I lie again or give you a mistruth? No, this is six inches. That is right on the nut, right on the money, six inches there of SK5 clip point blade steel. And then you've got the craton handle, rubberized craton handle with the checkering. And then when you turn it and look at it from its dorsal side, you will see that there's a palm swell and a very nice contouring on this axis as well. I love that. Cold Steel does that with their molded craton handles. That's one of the positives. Uh, I'm not always crazy about the craton, uh, but I've had a bunch of it for, for, you know, one of them I've had for almost 30 years and it, it still doesn't, isn't uh, degrading. That's what I was worried about mostly that it would just start to melt over time, you know, as plastics do or degrade. Okay, so that's it for this list of camp knives, recreation, bushcraft, and survival. And uh, the SRK is bringing it on home uh, for y'all.
these are all excellent knives. Um, I highly recommend all of them. Um, of course, some of the uses I was mentioning them good for are, are, uh, are ones that you should try out on your own. All right, so please find a list of all the knives on this show on today's podcast and links to the knife news stories at thenifejunkie.com slash 359. Thank you, Jim. And uh, be sure to join us next week uh, or on Sunday for uh, Michael Miller of Tactile Knives. He came, uh, Tactile Knife Company, came on the show and we talked all things Tactile Knives. They're such a cool company and uh, I love what they're doing. And then join us on Thursday, of course, for Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.